I am here today to talk to you about the future of government, because the future of government, as we know it, is transforming into culture. So in the beginning, there was one, our planet, a diverse and dynamic ecosystem that was formed not just of one, but of a series of rocks that came together, merged, created a molten core, and chemically reacted until we had the foundation for the structure of all life in our ecosystem as we know it. Now, as nature reflects nature, culture reflects culture, and organization reflects organization, I want to tell you a story about three different insects that have affected and impacted the way we as a human race have organized ourselves. Now, first, we have the ant. The ant is a highly colonial species built to serve the queen, often violent to those that do not exist within their core infrastructure or within their core colony. Ants have one sole purpose. It is to expand and serve the queen. So in today's world, who are the ants? Now, insect number two, is the spider. We look at spiders like they are scary because they are beautiful and dangerous, weaving webs with self-spun borders to ensnare any who enter or even pass closely. The spider's web may look delicate, but it's actually made of the strongest material on Earth, Kevlar. So in this world, in this organization, who is the spider? on our planet, in human life. And then we have the honeybee. The honeybee is one of the most interdependent species in our entire ecosystem. Honeybees pollinate every world around them, first flying to a flower, which they pollinate, whose ecosystem they help to thrive and survive. They return to their hive to create good for their surrounding community, and then they produce something that's good for the world, that can be enjoyed by many species, a liquid gold known as honey. Now, honeybees are also fascinating because our planet would critically collapse without honeybees. They're one of the most integral components of our Earth today. So in our human organization, who is the honeybee? I'd like for you to think about whether or not you identify with any one, two, or three of these insects. Do you know who they are? Well, first, let's review. The ant strips land and people of resources holding them in vaults. They are ever-expanding, never benefiting those outside of the colony. They are built to serve the queen. The spider is ensnaring wealth and the innocent, making any person who draws near them a victim, rendering others helpless within the boundaries of their self-spun borders. They make the strongest material on earth, and they are ruthless. Now, the honeybee harvests and regenerates. They use their innate powers and abilities to produce good for the world. They are an integral component of our ecosystem survival, and they are one of the most highly interdependent species on our planet. So are you ready to find out who they are? The ant is the modern corporation, accumulating property, resources, storing them in vaults, serving hierarchical leadership for the benefit of the colony and the colony alone, oftentimes being predatory and cutthroat to competitive colonies. The spider is the geographical nation state, ensnaring within its borders anyone who draws near. It has the largest research and development budget in the world, and while they are making the strongest materials, the pursuit of the strongest materials is often in use of violence toward innocent populations of people uh, to murder for profit and the acquisition of further resources to feed the growth of the one spider and its web. And the honeybee is the community. The honeybee is the family. The honeybee is the tribe. 
and what these local groups are generating toward the ends of solving a problem is honey, and that honey is knowledge. And that knowledge is for everyone. It should be a free and open resource for all. So where is the honey today? Well, the honey is stored in closed networks that are incentivizing low trust instead of open networks of governance. Now, we have the ability to take this mentality of one eating the small and turn into a swarm that's able to organize and redefine the way we think about the systemic foundation of our planet today. But keep in mind that just like nature, we can't do it alone. So who will help us in this journey? to redefine the way we organize as a human race. Well, there are many organizations, but it's the underserved. Those who are not being served by the current system are those who will be the most likely to adapt something new. Take, for example, a massive refugee population. We have 25 million refugees outside of our entire planet. We have one million refugees sitting in a camp outside of Bangladesh that have appeared over the last three years. That one million of refugees, that's larger than the population of San Francisco and Austin. Keep in mind, this has appeared over a very short period of time, and when I see this, I think of something meaningful. A million people appearing in a harsh climate, literally overnight, where they have no resources, and they're living under extreme conditions and temporary structures. It reminds me of another self-organizing society called Burning Man. Except that the difference is that in Burning Man, organized in the desert in an extremely harsh environment where people are self-organizing, while there is no money at Burning Man, there are certainly a lot of resources. But can you think of another market where almost $500 billion worth of value has flowed within under 10 years? Blockchain and digital currency. If we provide people with open access to resources and opportunity, allowing them to own their own identity, we already have the pieces in place to restructure the foundation of the nation state. It's merely a matter of us organizing them within to their own interdependent groups. Now, in addition to Burning Man, we also have digital nomads. Digital nomads are projected to be over a billion people by 2035. That's one-seventh of our current population people that will not have a relationship with a traditional nation-state, but will redefine the future of their own work. Now, Burning Man represents something more than just a festival. Burning Man represents the idea that when we open access to community and the resources within that community, participating dynamically, robustly, and diversely within them, access to resources becomes fundamentally abundant. When we actualize our empathy and our interdependency, we as a human species flourish. So in this future, the future of our reorganization, there are many tribes like Portal. Portal is a group whose first property is called Genesis. It is a 40-acre property in Boulder Creek in California. They have their own token called Karma that is meant to incentivize civic responsibility. This is a group that owns multiple properties around the world. They have a diverse, dynamic, and intelligent community, and they're creating their own sovereign economic infrastructure. Habitas in Tulum, which is a community built for creative and technology magicians, co-conspirators, creators, co-authors to come together in one environment in multiple locations across the planet to survive and thrive, create community, and dynamically work on projects. Puerto Rico. There's a movement happening there right now after the United States abandoned their ability to provide relief post-hurricane. Many people from the blockchain community have gone to Puerto Rico to explore the opportunity of empowering Puerto Ricans with the tools to solve their own problems. There's also Standing Rock Reservation, which this year had a major protest for no DAPL to prevent people from building a pipeline on sacred indigenous land. Now, the indigenous communities are also very sacred to me because the technology we build is actually co-created by Phil Lane Jr. He is an indigenous elder, the leader of the Dakota, the Chickasaw, and the Wakpala Society that is absolutely instrumental in Standing Rock. So, what is this technology going to look like that will structure our future? Well, it looks like our world is reorganizing beyond government into culture that the future of government is actually culture. And that future, incredibly, is already here. We just have to provide people with the tools 
to own their life and their resources and give them access to diverse and dynamic communities. The foundation of this technology looks like political liberation through ubiquitous access and ownership to rights through an infrastructure called Web of Trust, co-authored by the co-author of TLS and SSL and the former principal architect of Blockstream. This is a global standard for identity that changes the model from centralized ownership into community stewardship for both your identity, your contracts, your marriages, all your property, and your certificates. Beyond this ledger that provides universal access to rights, there's a public API providing everyone across the world with marketplace applications to different communities, governance networks, and service applications that can replace the traditional infrastructure currently provided by corporations and national governments. What this means is we have a dynamic ecosystem of ownership, not a consolidated model. There are many opportunities for you to gain, store, share, and receive value from what you own, whether that is your data, your community, or any asset. Your digital information is a non-scarce asset. Blockchain technology can be measured in a way that is inherently economically scarce. So, who will create this future? Well, it's all of us. We believe an ICO should be an initial community offering, that everyone should have the access to create their own economic infrastructures, and that marketplaces of communities with their own interdependent sovereign economic structures, full of sovereign individuals, free to participate in as many of these as they would like, that that is the future. So be like the bee. Be your own state, because the future of government is culture. Thank you very much.